Welcome back to the channel, folks. Let me know if you can see me. I uh, am getting the spinning wheel of death on my computer. Let me reboot it, see if it's working now. Okay, I think I think we're good. Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? All right. Thank you all for joining in today on another live stream. I appreciate it. I've been enjoying these things. Um, next week, well, I'm booked out like three or four weeks, but next week we do have uh, Dave from Dash Vapes. Uh, they've been a, a up-and-comer uh, lately. That channel is about to pass mine up, so I'm going to probably be giving him shit about that. But anyway, today we have a good friend of mine named j -Bo. Let's go ahead and bring him on. If I can figure out how to <laughs> go to, okay, let me turn that off. Split. Oh. All right, we could see you. How you doing, nice. buddy? I'm wonderful. Hello, everyone. Lovely being on the show, as it were. Don't you guys think uh, Jabo's beard is looking amazing? We were just it's talking, coming in talking nicely, about actually. That. Um, I suppose I should show everyone else at the boys and girls at home. So I found this. It is, as far as I can tell, it's the tiniest possible comb um, I've ever seen. And it was at CVS. Um, you know, kind of go around like the, the people with the fro, you know. Does it come, do those come in like packages of a bunch of them? Like they're just No, it was just the one. I think it, it came with this and like a little pair of tweezers, which I don't know why you'd want to like comb it and be like, that, there's the rebellious one. And <laughs> I think you should make like some little stab wood beard, oh, dude. beard combs. I'd be all about the, that. The high end guys would love that. <laughs> we were just laughing about it because it's like you know tis the season coming up to mustache march you know Gotta... oh, i wish mine was full enough to need any type of combing <laughs> i just kind of go like this yeah just go outside in the wind it kind of moves it around for you well you know what's messed up is my beard's not like growing in any heavier lately but like the i'm getting grays in it dude mm -hmm. might need to just ferment it i'm starting i'm, I'm getting there I'm, I I did not do well when it comes to genetics. I'm getting grays on my head, too. <laughs> my beard That's sucks. Okay. You, you got the hat on. You're fine. <laughs> so how you been, buddy? I'm awesome, man. I'm really, really good. It's been um, it's been kind of a fun few months, actually, since end of summer for me, which, if nobody else knows, is when I kind of separated from West Mech, um, from employment. And yeah, it's been kind of fun. I've been doing my own little YouTube channel, as many of you know, um, and doing reviews and still doing, you know, I'm still in the hardware space, but uh, just different. Yeah, different stuff. So for those, I mean, most people know who you are, but for those that don't know who you are, why don't you give a little backstory? And while he's giving this backstory, everyone go subscribe to Jabo's Reviews, Ooh. his review <laughs> channel. He's been doing a really good job at that and killing it. But yeah, Thank go ahead and tell us about your your his. You don't have to go back to birth, but if you want to talk no. about like your vaping your vaping history, we'll we'll, we'll start there. Sure. Yeah. No. It's um for most of you guys that have even heard of the toe atomizer or the toe baddie, that's kind of my like genesis. I mean, there's a little bit of a side story previous to that, but basically the first atomizer I ever made and designed was called the Tobe, and it was innovative. I see. I have to be careful here because it's. <clears throat> it was super, super innovative in all aspects, but you have to keep in context of like the time period. So all of the features that you see on modern RDAs and RTAs and things like that, a lot of those came from kind of my era. Um, and there were certain advancements that I made, and then there were certain advancements that other manufacturers made after me, two or three in particular, but I'm basically one of the OGs. So for nobody that knows who I am from that, um, after the fact, I made a little short uh, Bambino. It was called the Bambino. It was another little flavored dripper atomizer. Um, and that was actually just following another couple friends of mine, Praxis, if you guys know them too. So that was like, that was the innovation level at that time. And then I made another atomizer, which, you know, Moving, sliding into the, the Westmec side of things. So Westmec's a Chinese manufacturer and I began working full time for them, um, pretty much the fall of 2015. And that's when I released like the noisy cricket, which was the little tube 
two battery 18650 parallel mechanical box and the indestructible atomizer and of course the Relo. Um, and then I did some work for uh, Elif and Wisp, uh, Elif and Joytech as well, but those weren't Jabo branded. Those were just projects of so things like the Pico and stuff like that. So yeah, I've had my little fingers kind of all over the place over the years, but uh, Westmec was pretty much my home. You know, that's what most people know me. If they don't know me from the Tobe days, they definitely know me at least to a degree from, um, you know, some of the successes I had with Westmec. And yeah, so I, I left that, which most people would be like, well, why? And it's just, you know, working for a Chinese manufacturer full time is incredibly demanding on the body, um, both in travel and just hours put in, in the day. So yeah, I wanted to kind of exchange a little bit of, you know, my work for some laziness and freedom and free time. So I've been kind of enjoying doing my own thing and having my own pace with the YouTube channel. So it's kind of nice to kind of throttle and be my own boss again, I guess, but it's just different. Yeah. yeah. That, does that help? <laughs> it's helpful. And like for, I don't think, okay, unless you've been vaping, not you, but people out there, unless you've been vaping since like 20, 20- 13 or so you don't really know how monumental the tobe was like at the time when did that launch mark uh 2014 no actually winter of 13 winter of 13 yep at the time like that was the hotness for a good 10 (laughs) 10 months at least because it was they were hard to get like i mean they kept being hot but like for a while there like people were flipping them and and selling them for crazy amounts of money everyone wanted to get their hands on one I tried for a long time, finally got one and did a review, kind of butchered it because I was pretty new. <laughs> I remember that review so much. Yeah. I mean, that was like oh my, my first God. six six months of reviewing. I mean, it, it's... Oh, my favorite uh, is, is the CNC marks on the bottom. <laughs> you, were, you were looking at it and you're like, I think this is to like help juice flow or something. I just, I died <laughs> laughing when I saw it. If you guys haven't found it, go back and find his old no, review. It is no. amazing. Do it. Don't Do go it. watch that video. <laughs> Vanessa and I, re- I we, we, so we, hard. we realized like a couple days ago that the channel's been out or been around for five years now since we first yeah. started doing vape videos. And so we went back and looked at some of the old videos and it's just like, Oh, it's so cringy. I mean, I'm I assuming if I'm doing if I do this another five years, I'll be looking at today's videos and being like, "What the fuck were you thinking, Matt?" But it was, <laughs> it was definitely uh, it was rough. But yeah, anyway, that that RDA was massive. Then obviously, you know, you did some other RDAs, but like, the, wouldn't you say out of all of them, out of everything you've done, the Rouleau series was probably the most popular? Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> obviously the Pico series was incredibly popular, especially in Europe, but that oh, didn't have right. my name attached yeah. to it at all. So I kind of like, kind of can't count that one, but yeah, the, the, the Pico series and the Rouleau series were the two things that really, you know, had the most effect mass effect, you know, spanning the globe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most people that have been vaping for over a couple of years have had at least one Rouleau. Oh, at least. Yeah, I still love the ones you go to the vape shows and it's like the paint's all gone. It's been bashed, but it still still works, still holds, and they're just as proud of it, you know. Um, Amy, one of our amazing uh, moderators, asked if we could uh, confirm whether the B is capitalized. I assumed it is because you capitalize it in your channel, right? It is. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have a little hyphen. Um Back in the day, and I don't really know why it was per se, but I was very like adamant about you know it's like J dash capital B O, <clears throat> but so, then I sort of lost the hyphen <laughs> out of laziness, I guess. So now that you're doing some reviews, are uh, is there I'm any trying. some newer like some Jabo new new that could be coming out in the next? I mean, obviously you don't have to give too much, but could, could no, we it's... potentially see some things in the future? Yes, absolutely. So <clears throat> I I enjoy doing the YouTube videos because for me it's I've been in manufacturing so long and been creating you know products for so long that it's just easy for me to look at what somebody else has done and then with that same lens go okay like they did this really well or this is a cool feature that I wouldn't have thought of or manufacturing like this is cool or obviously the alternative of like yeah they they definitely missed the ball and here's why and been able to explain it that kind of thing which they sometimes like and sometimes don't like <laughs> but um outside of the youtube space i've been kind of pushing a little bit to be more of like a consultant so 
I would love to see all of these companies' prototypes and be able to give my feedback. And if they feel like it's you know valuable or correct, then they can make those changes before the product gets released, and then I won't have to give that particular review of like they missed these points. Um, but I understand that a lot of companies are kind of you know protective of that sort of thing. And, and again, it's not it's not in their best interest to just be sending like prototypes out to all these potential reviewers, even though that does happen, as you know. But um, I very much feel like I have a place in that kind of consultancy position, especially with some of these bigger companies. Um, and on top of that, there's a couple companies I'm um, more than happy to work with and, and create products with and to develop, you know, different product lines specifically, not just like putting my name on stuff, like really kind of helping them develop new things. But yeah, so all that to say, there's at least two things that are coming out in the next like month and a half to two months, probably less actually. One of which is an RDA, which I haven't told anybody about, but here you go. Debut. Um, Sorry. A, yeah, <laughs> right? Surprise! No, it's I mean, a, it's I, a, I said you, you don't, you could tell us as much as you're comfortable with. Oh, it's fine. It's just basically, it's a flavor dripper that is not designed for massive airflow nor massive, massive coils, which kind of harkens back to like the Tobino um, and even the Bambino, even though it's not that small, it's just that kind of concept. And then um, still working on, uh, I'll mention this, I'm still working on an RTA with Daniel from DJ LSB Vapes. And this is very much focused on the MTL um, which has kind of a unique airflow system. So I don't know how much I can say on that one just because it's, it's Daniel as well. And I don't want to jump the gun, but um, if that one ends up, you know, being finalized and coming out to the market, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So (laughs) it makes me happy. Nice. Um, So let's, uh, one of the things, okay, so the title, I said, so I called it Science of Vaping with Jabo because there's some sciencey things I want to ask you. And you might not know all of them, and, and some of them I'm sure you do. But a lot of times as reviewers, we try to explain things in layman's terms and totally hack it and, and do awful because, you know, we're not very bright. We're just vape reviewers. <laughs> And so, right. <laughs> and so like some of the things I wanted to ask you about, like term correct terminology, um, we'll start out with the first one, which I already, I already talked to you about, but like one of the things, well, off, off camera, one of yeah. the things that I, uh, mention a lot in my videos are, is, you know, I call it air pressure, but mm-hmm. like when you have adjustable airflow on say an RTA or a sub ohm tank or whatever, And you're closing the airflow down from the base, but then the air, you know, there's still a big old channel and the air gets to the coil. It seems like, you know, once you close it down enough, there's not enough force. How, how would you describe that? So the, uh, in layman's terms, (laughs) um, probably the easiest way to draw a conclusion with this is like having a hose, you know, just a, a hose with no, no spigot or anything, just a constant flow, not laminar flow, but like a constant output, basically the size of the hose is what kind of water is flowing. So as you push your thumb over it, right, you're increasing the speed, uh, the velocity of the water, but you're actually decreasing the pressure. It's kind of a weird yeah. balance. So um, how that works in an RTA, and then you would think like because it's harder to push your thumb over, it's higher pressure, but it, it's weird. It's not. So the the – the choke point, that's a good way of putting it. The choke point of your airflow channel should happen right before the coil. Um, and that's would, why something like, cause okay, for example, when I, when I talked about the Orion, I got a hmm. lot of shit because I was like, Hey, this thing's not really a true MTL. I mean, you can cut no, it, it down, but you can only cut it down so much before you lose that. What I call air pressure or whatever. I do put the lights. So that like big square right there, yeah, that kind of as a space that sort of loses its choke point. Um, actually, I, perfect idea. Okay, you drink a soda. Okay, uh, <laughs> you have a straw or something in the soda, and no choke point. Ha ha ha! Good man, well done, clutch. Um, <laughs> so as you're drinking through the straw, you get a particular amount of flow or whatever it is. If for whatever reason you were to like pinch only one side of the straw. And you were to put the pinch side down into the bottom of the soda, you wouldn't really notice 
a difference per se in actual flow on your end because you've got the, the wide open end. Pinch is down here. So as the pinch happens, obviously you have that increase in velocity and decrease in pressure and all that fun stuff I was just talking about. But by the time it actually gets to your face, the opening is still the same size. That represents very much turning the airflow down on the air ring. Yeah. If you flip that straw all the way around, you're going to basically experience um, – I don't know how to say this without having someone do it. That's what she said. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Like the, the velocity is increased <laughs> at your face, um, which is incredibly noticeable as far as flow difference goes because the choke point is right before your face. Yeah. That, no, that makes sense. And the, and the way I've noticed is that it's, it's more noticeable. Uh, it's a more of a noticeable issue with mouth to lung than it is with direct lung stuff. So like, that's true. Yeah. For, so, for example, like a lot of manufacturers will come out with these MTL devices, whether it be you know, an MTL pre-built coil tank or an MTL RTA, and they, they have too big of an airflow hole right under the coil, and they expect you to co close the air down on the base, but at that point, if you close it down too tight, you're not getting that, that velocity. Right. Um, no, you're absolutely right. And the reason why it doesn't have as much of an effect on like an RTA or a sub ohm tank with these massive air cuts is because at the base of the actual coil right before either if it's a vertical coil like a coil head um, or an RTA with a wrapped coil, the amount of volume that's able to enter into the atomizer is far greater than the actual volume just before the coil. And so you actually have to turn the ring down about about halfway or so yeah before you actually notice before those volumes equal now you will notice a change in sound and that's mostly just turbulence and that's something else we can talk about too if you want to go there um yeah i want to i wanted to talk about turbulence a little bit and smooth you know the the draw has got especially <sighs> Back when, uh -huh. back when I first started reviewing, people mm -hmm. didn't focus on the the smoothness of the draw as much. Um, but at the same time, stuff was a lot more simple. So our most just about all RDAs were just side airflow RDAs. They just had you know a hole in there and whatever. But now that things are getting more complicated, there's more angles in in the you know the channel that the airflow is going. People are starting to um, uh, you know, try out different airflow patterns, whether it be honeycomb or, you know, yep. cyclops slots or whatever. And that can change up the draw a lot. So like, what's, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> um, I mean, before I get too far ahead of myself, let me just do the disclaimer, you know, all good racing drivers have to have their excuses in order. Um, I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. <laughs> so I do have a working knowledge of like kind of the physics and the flows and things, but if anybody out there that's properly educated is screaming at the screen, I apologize. Um, so turbulence in vaping is our friend. Now a turbulent feel where you're drawing either it be an atomizer or whatever it is. And as you're drawing consistently, you're getting um, kind of that like <laughs> yeah. noise. Or there's like I paper in there or something. Yeah. Right. So that's, Yes, that's turbulence, but that's um, that's not what we're going for. Uh, one way to kill that is – actually, let's see if I have – I don't know if you can see. So right here by my fingernail is an open chamber, and right here by my fingernail is a small chamber. So where the airflow comes up and hits the coil, we usually play with expanding and contracting voids or spaces before it actually gets to the, uh, to the drip tip, drip tip included. Um uh, K-Fun's also famous for doing this sort of stuff. They had a, a large opening in their drip tip, and then right before it got to the top, it pinched. Um, and then they had their open chamber and then uh, you know, their actual chimney, and then they had the drip tip opening. So it's this kind of they, – they had the right idea. <clears throat> um, but turbulence in this particular case is recycling air that isn't clean. So clean air will pass by you know, very efficiently, create negative pressures in certain places and all that kind of stuff. Once you have this airflow coming in, um, choke point or whatever, what have you, and you have it impacting posts, walls, coils, cotton, the whole mess. Um, you get this kind of tumbling effect, and effectively, it it benefits because the longer the air is hanging out, the more it's disturbing the vape uh, expansion or the, the the combustion of the coil, and it's gaining heat and it's carrying you know more of the moisture and things. So. Like I said, turbulence is our friend. I actually don't know a whole lot mathematically behind the actual 
uh, the flow rates and like, I guess the, the dynamics of the fluid, the air to mathematically spell out for you why it's good. I can just pretty much on a working basis of knowledge give you, you know, size of air hole, distance from coil, angle, what have you, and then a uh, chamber size to give you something good. It's not really helpful. Not really scientific as well. Um, but yeah, the, the honeycomb holes, they basically create a, a barrier, a filter. So while you have airflow hitting that wall pretty strong, those holes are going to basically separate um, the airflow or disrupt the airflow. And then that disrupted airflow is going to therefore impact the coils and then tumble and whatever the the, the chimney or the dome on top looks like that's going to basically be, be responsible for all of your um, your flavor consolidation. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So you don't need the, the, the honeycomb holes. It's not the best way of doing things. Um, I mean, side airflow works just as good on round wire. You know, it just depends on how close you built that coil to the, to the, to the sleeve itself and where that was height wise. It made a huge difference on flavor. And that was part of the beauty of builders, people that are making the Claptons and like, depending on how they cut the leads, where they centered the coils, all this kind of stuff really had a huge effect on flavor. Yeah. Well, one of, it's, it seems like with RDAs, people are getting pretty advanced on how to smooth the draw out and, and, uh, give it that, ex- you know, give people that experience that, that they want or expect now. One of the things yep. that's still lacking is all these mesh sub ohm tanks coming out are all still pretty, you know, turbulent. They have that, Let, that they're, they're if, noisy. If you'll allow me, I'm going to run away for like three seconds. I'll be right back. Sure. I want to show you something. Yeah. <clears throat> In the meantime, I'll just sit here and entertain you. Paul? Oh, he's coming back. All right. <clears throat> so, on topic, right? Um, this is the, um, good Lord, Mr. Just Right One, Joel. This is Joel's uh, mesh. Pro- profile. Yep, the profile. Thank you. So, <laughs> okay. Well, there it goes. So, yes, those of you that are familiar, it is a mesh strip with a heap of cotton. Now, I love this atomizer. However, I prefer this cap. It's not the cap it came with. If I can explain a little bit of this one, this might help. So this happens to be a cap from a completely other dri- uh, um, another dripper. I think it's the um, Entheon by Cyclone. Okay. When placed onto said deck, you'll notice that that little um, screw there is the center. There's an airflow hole here on the side and an airflow f- hole there on the side. And positionally, you can see them there. Mm-hmm. The mesh is dead center. Oh, that's not going to come out, man. I haven't vaped this thing in a minute. There it goes. So airflow is coming in between the post and the cotton. There's a little void there. Perfect. You can see there's a little void space between the two pieces of cotton. And because of the shape of the cap, that airflow is having to come in pretty much right at that angle. So the I got you. So it's in. kind of running up those two channels right in between the cotton and the mesh and the connection it's, point there. It's hitting the coil – not the coil. Sorry. It's hitting the posts and the cotton, and it really has nowhere to go but tumble. And because of the shape of it, it's tumbling along the surface area of the mesh all the way to the top. Interesting. And because – I might because have one of those how- caps somewhere. I might have to try that. Do it, I would say, and again, you're not going to get the cloud chasey airflow that the original cap comes with, and the original cap's fine, but I changed this immediately, and uh, dude, huge fan. And Joel, if you're watching, I apologize. The only reason I haven't done a review for this is because I like it better without your cap on it. <laughs> See, the, you know, the only thing, one, like, the, like, the only thing I wonder, like, with the <clears throat> mesh RDA, like, the profile's hands down the best mesh RDA out right now. Agreed. Um, but at some point it'd be nice to, for someone to find a way to have airflow hit it more evenly too, you know, like your way. <laughs> but like, do you think that the right. air gets all the way to the top there? Like the top of the mesh because of that angle it's taking? 100%. I wish I could actually sort of cut this in half so you can see, or at least give you a better. I get what you're saying. You know, it comes in really low. It comes in really comes low, in low. And then it kind of go, goes along those channels. It has no choice but to basically smash and tumble and because the cotton is so consuming of the inner space 
um, it literally just provides a channel all the way up and through to the drip tip on both sides. Um, so I think it increases the flavor probably close to 30% if I had to guess. But it does reduce the airflow like 10%, 20%, something it's like that. It's such a popular RDA. Why don't you make some specialty j caps for it? I know. I know. I To be fair, I thought of it, and, and I have um, – I've made little, you know, Ultim caps and specialty things to fix, or not fix, but like make my own little versions of, you know, Brian, like the drop RDAs and stuff like that, the solo. Um, but I just, you know, I don't mind doing this kind of stuff, but it does get potentially offensive if the person doesn't really, uh, no, I'm not saying Joel does this, but you don't want to step on somebody's toes by going, they did it wrong. Look what I did. Nah, I fixed it. And that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, which for those of you that are old enough to remember, that's exactly how the Bambino atomizer came around. <laughs> it was a, it was an airflow fix in my mind for the, uh, the Derringer. Oh yeah. Praxis, which was awesome. So originally I just made the cap for it and then I ended up converting an old Tobe deck to be a Bambino deck. Anyway, it was just, so, you know, they, they, there was probably a couple of years where they weren't too happy with me, I'm sure. Cause I kind of, I think it depends. I mean, sometimes when someone comes out with a new accessory for a product, it kind of breathes new life into it, and their sales it, go up on that product as well. It does. So if you've already got the profile, then look at the Cyclone Mods caps, and they're beautiful as well. I mean, the clear plastic and the the there's Ultimate and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm that's a perfect that. example of mesh and also to continue our airflow talk. So that was that was kind of something I saw immediately and was like, ooh, I'm gonna. I'm going to modify this kind of or like, and it really, it ended up just being nice that it, it clicked on. But, um, if this didn't work, I would have made pretty much exactly this for, for this atomizer my, on my own. So are you a believer in, um, smaller chambers making the flavor better? It depends. Um, I am not a huge, so I, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, smaller chambers do help, but it doesn't have to be a small miniature uh, chamber because keep in mind that the the size of the chamber is going to depict pretty much how hot your vape is going to be or how close the coil is to where the drip tip is, case in point, right? Um, The shape of the chamber is more important for uh, flavor, in my opinion, more than than the size. Um, You have a better chance of getting good flavor off of a smaller chamber because again, there's, there's less happening, but, um, yeah, it seems like, like when it's condensed it's, like that, it warms up easier too, which really tends fast. to make flavor shine. Disappear. Yeah. Well, I would say disappear on right. if it gets, if it gets too hot. Well, so, if it gets too hot. Yeah. But I'm saying like, you're, you know, you're right. Um, like if like, I, cause like back in the day, there was this argument. Do you remember, uh, oh, fuck, what's the guy's name? Um, He used to make the house of something. He used to make a Jenny's and he used to make a, was his, his name start with a Z? Like Phil Basardo used to have him on the, on the show all the time and he had a big old white beard. Somebody help me out in the chat. Anyway, this guy yeah. would, I, I, from what I remember, he would claim that, you know, the bigger chambers actually were better for flavor or whatever, which never really made a ton of sense to me. Um, if, I mean, I, th- yeah. I think shape makes sense, but I don't know. What do you, what do you think? No, it's just Zen. Like I said, Zen, Zen, Zen. Zen. Yes. Wait, well, you're talking about Zen from no, 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 no. House Big of way. House of Hybrid Zen. Okay. He I know, made like I know a Jenny, and I remember there was arguments there in the community about you know the the because because back then like some people were making Jennies and they were reducing the chambers big time on them and then yep. he, his was like totally open and he argued against the fact that the smaller chambers <laughs> help with the flavor and and whatnot from what I remember. So. I, what I meant by a small chamber previous by getting it uh, too hot, too small, and the flavor goes away. Um, some people just put a microscopic chamber on top of a coil and just be like, well, there, it's going to be a flavor bomb. And it's like, well, no. Um, a lot of people now use slightly more complicated coils. And what I mean by that is just a single wrap Clapton versus, you know, the 28 gauge, three wrap, four wrap, or six wrap, whatever it is, mm-hmm. for an MTL setup. For an MTL setup, smaller chambers are 
much better because you're not trying to heat a larger space. So with a smaller space, you're actually getting, you know, less output because of MTL, but you're still getting that amount of heat that you want to maintain. Um, shape of the chamber is important. Size of the chamber does matter, but if you ever seen those slow-mo videos of fireworks, right, where they fire a mod and all these little, these little sh- um, droplets fly off like a little yeah. explosion, right? Yeah. If you can carry those with turbulence up that, uh, air, um, up the drip tip, you're basically going to be covering your tongue in these little, little dew specks. And so when you actually yeah. taste it, you go, Oh my God, the juice is so flavorful. And it's not that you're drinking juice because that's always the, the con there. Um, but yeah, basically an aerosolized liquid is a cloud. It's a, it's a condensation. So if you had it dense enough, still enough, you could kind of, you know, wave your hand around in vape and then kind of, you know, feel a yeah. little bit of residue. So that's what really gives you the flavor. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain atomizers that are just moister than others. I know people love that that word, I moist. Mean, but where you're like licking moist. your lips, you know, and you can right. taste it. And I would say actually smoke owes a lot of its, uh, you know, success to the TFE4s and the Baby Beasts and that whole thing, which are incredibly moist hits. Yeah. Um, not necessarily hot, but definitely has that mouth feel. So I don't know. I go back and forth. I have a couple RDAs, even a couple RTAs that are really small. Actually, there's one called the Doggy Style. The whole thing is like, you know, that big. The chamber is is only tall enough to not short out on the coil, um, and it is very flavorful. But if I don't have my ohms high enough, it gets to the point where all I taste is hot. Yeah, it's too um, hot. Kind of like a hot cup of tea. Like before you let it cool down, you really can't perceive any particular flavors. So it's it, that's that's the hard part about the RTAs, RDAs. You're you're balancing um, airflow, heat, flavor, this kind of thing. And I think for tank manufacturers, I mean, we we do it. We we make fifteen or sixteen versions of something, and then make a couple subcategories of two or three versions of that one with different cotton to to throttle the amount of juice that's able to come into it. Um, to, to formulate exactly the hit we want. So I know other manufacturers do it because it's good. Um, but when it comes to, you know, something like this, I, I think just a simple change of the airflow made a huge difference. Um, just so you guys know, I, we will be taking questions towards the end of, of chat. So if you get missed right now, we'll, we'll, we'll take as many as we can. Um, let's talk about wicking. This is another one that I wanted to ask you, and <laughs> okay. I know I'm putting you on the spot here. That's all right. <clears throat> so it's my best here with bottom no coil, promises. bottom coil RTAs. I mean, the first one to get really popular were the, was the K funds, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which, by the way, guys, there might be a new K fund coming out soon. Um, <laughs> with uh, with bottom coil RTAs, you you have like what a lot of people would describe as like a vacuum or a reverse vacuum or something there's because you know, then if you break the seal, like say you untwist a top cap or whatever, it can flood. Like, right. do, do, can, do you have any like uh, scientific way of explaining that better than I can? I don't know. Um, I don't, I really don't know what exactly to call it. it so it, it is. A, so first and foremost, e-juice as everyone knows is, nowhere near the viscosity of of water right it's much much more much much thicker yeah and behaves more like you know an oil or olive oil or something like that so it doesn't flow the same um it has everything to do with your wicking material so the permeability i guess of cotton meaning it allows so much flow per second or whatever it is um Cotton is fantastic because as it gets dry on one end, it will speed up to meet that need. If it's not dry on one end, it will slow down to not flow past that or flood or whatever it is. So cotton as a wicking material is fantastic. Now, we're giving credit to a vacuum bubble when reality the barrier is the cotton. So when we release that bubble up top by opening the cap and just letting it sit – um, there's nothing holding that juice from ever so slowly leaking into the cotton. Um, certain coils, again, I mentioned smoke that, that run wet, 
if you leave them overnight, most likely in the morning you'll be able to tilt it and get at least a drop or more out yeah. just because it's been sitting there long enough. A lot of the sub-ohm tanks can get – yeah, get right. like that. It has, has time to normalize. So the easiest way to think of the bubble is it is a self-contained vacuum kind of. And again, to go back to a straw, I'm, I'm using straws again. You take that same soda straw, you put it all the way down in your drink, and you cap the top. You can then lift up a whole thing of liquid. If you let your finger go, all the liquid drops back in the can. Same kind of thing. So is there really a vacuum up top? Yeah, because it's sealed. So the weight of the liquid pulling underneath it is de- technically giving you uh, a, a vacuum or a, a negative pressure, right? The most easy way to think of that bubble is actually in expanding or in a contract uh, contracting phase, mostly because of temperature. So case in point, you leave your tank, or you leave your pod system in the car, you come back in 20 minutes later, and it's just leaked all over the place. Basically what's happened is that bubble has gotten hot, air, everything, and when it gets warm, expands. And as it expands, it literally forces pressure down into the juice uh sorry forces the juice into the cotton into the actual you know wicking and coil chamber and then the juice has nowhere to go but down into your airflow yeah so if you're going to go on an airplane if you're going to leave your mod in the car whatever it is do so please flip it upside down flip it upside down i've had i've learned the hard way on the airplane thing i mean i like back when i first started vaping like i flew a couple (laughs) times and just get into your backpack and there's just liquid everywhere And to a degree, it's um, a little bit uncontrollable because you can't always hold it exactly upside down wherever you're going. But the wick itself is the barrier. The 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 bubble it is is a vacuum kind of, and for much in the same way as the um, uh, excuse me, much in the same way as having <clears throat> your finger over the end of a of a of a straw or something. But if you were to take a napkin and slowly like remove liquid from the bottom, you may actually get a bubble to come up into all the way to the top of that straw. And it's very similar to what's happening in a tank. So you still have that pressure, but as soon as you open it up, it's yeah. going to The tricky thing is though, is that when that barrier is too strong or too tight in there, there, there needs to still be room for like air to be able to escape. Right. Right. And that's actually, <laughs> that's probably one of my biggest complaints of companies that are like two mil capacity. And it's like, okay, well, is it two mil or is it 1.8 with an air bubble? Yeah. You know, yeah. cause they don't really account for usable volume. Um, well, and that's, the th- that's another thing too, is a lot of times with these bottom coil, RTAs, mm. or even occasionally with a sub ohm tank or whatever, if you fill them up too high and there is no air bubble, they don't they tend to not wick as well. You get a vapor lock beginning. and you get a dry hit exactly. Yeah, yeah. um, because that that the bubble is the key just to allow the fluid to move. It's a weird. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea, but as you remember back in the day, RDAs kind of had a uh, a cult following because. All tanks leak, bro. You know. Well, and that's what I what I learned just from putting out a couple of my own RTAs is that anything that could happen will. So you know, like like on my new my, on the elevate my newest one. Um, overwhelmingly, the majority of the people are are getting it to work fine. But then you'll get an email where one guy's like, "Hey, I can't get this thing to stop flooding and overwicking," and then the next email is like. Hey, I can't get this thing to wick correctly. It's uh, it's getting dry hit. So it's like yep. people have all the issues possible with these types of tanks, and a lot of it, I think, too, obviously depends on you know the wick job that they're doing, maybe the liquid they're using, maybe how yep. they're vaping it. I, yep. I, and that's that's another thing. Like I've noticed, and I've said this in some of my videos, like some people have a tendency to make things leak easier than others. Like Vanessa can, I can be vaping a some new mesh sub ohm tank for days and be fine. And then I could give it to Vanessa for an hour and somehow she makes it leak because I think she's sucking on it harder than I am or, or something. And whenever I talk about that, people obviously make jokes because there's lots of jokes that could be made there. But uh, it is, so I think even just the way someone's inhaling and vaping it can, can cause issues too. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're hundred percent right. It's um. do you remember the, uh, the notch coil, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, right. Theorem. There was 
a countless amount of people on Instagram that were like, oh my god, it's dry hitting, it's not wicking, it's this and that. And I kind of went, okay, I have to like come up with a, a an easy way of explaining this. And it, all it was was having them scoot or bias the cotton in, in the wick hole or the wick space to just ever so slightly one side so that right here was like a little space where an air bubble could escape and go up. And then that would equalize the top and bottom pressure and then it would work perfectly. Um, it's the exact same thing with a coil head. I can't tell you how many times uh, I've gone to China to work with the engineers and try and work on, you know, different millimeter lengths of cotton. And then we wrap all the coils. And because the cotton is a particular density, it actually won't let that airflow or the air, air bubble pass through and exchange into the tank itself. So it's, it's the wicking density is huge. Um, oh, and when it sure. comes to, when it comes to an RDA, RDTA version, it's, it's very difficult to, politely explain to someone they need to either increase or decrease their cotton density in a particular spot. Yeah. Well, the thing with the notch coil too, I think a lot of people weren't uh, wicking it tight enough, kind of like with mesh that that needed to be wicked really tight. But yeah, with like RDTAs, anytime I build them, like you got to poke a hole in the, in the wick slot to, for air to be able to release. Yeah. And it's not something that you would know how to do unless you've got a few dry hits before, <laughs> you know, it's something that, uh, unfortunately, as a teachable moment, is uh, it's quite difficult to impose on someone else who hasn't experienced it yet. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just they get, especially in the newer builders. You know, they'll they'll try something like that out or some sort of RTA, and it, you know, it's it, they'll get frustrated with it easily and and just bag it. But and rightfully so, though, because yeah. they're they're trying their best, you know. But, yeah, and I mean, if some people just want a good vape, <laughs> so that you know, rebuildables might not be for them if they don't like to mess around. But, but I mean, they have gotten a lot easier though. Oh my god, yes. than they things used like, to be. I mean, things like the goat, the new one from Grim Green and Homeboy. Yeah, I uh, and I'll do a review on that here shortly as well. But that's that's brilliant because someone can literally buy a squonk box, throw it about, you know, a squonk box with a uh, with a, with a chipset or some sort of safety throw that atomizer on top and you're good for like a month. And then if when you aren't change the cotton yourself, you just watch a YouTube video, not changing any of the coil stuff. And then I, I just, I love those kinds of, it, it, it's not that it's better than or worse than it. It's just, it, it lowers the barrier to entry so that someone else can enjoy. Yeah. You could still get that feel. rebuildable style vape. You can experience what squonking's like if you want to do that. And yep. uh, it's the best. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like the new, new, you know, the the, the disposable sub ohm tanks. If somebody wants to experience what it's like to do a sub ohm tank and not, you know, switch from their pod system to that and not really commit to this giant thing of metal and glass and bubbles and all that, you know, yeah, just try it, see if you like it, then go from there. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, I mean, I remember back in the day with rebuildables, it was like with the K funds and the K fund lights. Oh. People and that was when everyone was using silica wick, and you had oh to, yeah you had oh, to yeah. wick that thing perfectly. <laughs> now, like this newest K fund, I mean, this thing is so simple to wick. Yeah, it's super easy, and uh, like it was, it yeah, was, I, it was an art back in the day. I, I got to tell you, the first time, the first person I watched to try and learn how to mess with the K fund was Richard Twisted. Oh yeah. And I, I watched his video probably twice. I tried it myself. It, did, it didn't work, and I had to take it to a vape shop and be like, please help me, you know, because I was trying to build. I think it was like a .8 it was, the, was the build, and I was like, I want to do a .8. And they're like, you're crazy. It's way too low, you know. <laughs> um, Brian, Vapor Chronicles said, cold weather definitely impacts the viscosity of your e-liquid. I've noticed oh, that too. Sure. Like uh, besides just the air expanding – also, you know, hot yep. hot weather can thin your liquid out, and then Absolutely. cold weather it can be. Or if you start chain vaping, that air yep. bubble gets really hot because it's right there. Yeah. You know, which if you're chain vaping, it kind of works because then it helps to, to wick a little bit more. So elevation has everything to do with it. Heat has everything to do with it. Um, obviously, the pressures and things, but no, he's absolutely right. It's a, it's a dark art. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're having trouble with uh, RTAs, guys, don't give up. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And a lot of and let me let me let me give you this as a as a hint. There are many, many RTAs on the market that have a slot or an opening or something like this, and for, forgive the visual, but the coils in here 
and then the cotton kind of goes through this slot, and then you thread on a cap. So then it sort of pinches this space. Yeah. If you pinch the coil, uh, the, the the cotton, you are again increasing the density of that cotton right where it's being pinched, and then you cut it. So it kind of has this little foof sticking out. Yeah. You are so much better off pulling that long wick inside and laying it up against yeah. that space. We all uh, figured no that issues. out, like with the what was that E Phoenix one? The the really I loved that RTA. I'm having yeah. I'm brain dead today, guys. I'm sorry. It's okay. But that I think that was the no was that theirs or the, not the, the one I ran that on was the Delta Two from Joytech. That yeah. one the uh, the Limo Three and the rebuildable deck from either Smoke or Kanger. I think it was Kanger actually. The little rebuildable deck for yeah. their OCC coil. Yeah, you got to put it right up against. Yep. Maybe it wasn't the E Phoenix one. There was some high end RTA back in the day, mm-hmm. and everyone was always having problems with it. And it's like then all of a sudden, about not, the Hurricane. The, yeah, I don't know if that was it or not, though. Might have been it. But th- then everyone's, you know, it was like kind of a duh moment. Why does the cotton need to go through the slot? Just push it right up against there, and it'll swell yep. up once liquid yep. hits it anyway. And it worked so much better. Yeah, there's so there's countless ones of those. Even the ones where like the the deck itself is raised, and the cotton kind of dangles down inside of an RTA. That is, um, those seem to work pretty well. But then at the same time, air bubbles don't necessarily want to go down. Air bubbles want to go up. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a mix. This is this is good content, man. We haven't. We haven't really. I know. Found- I mean, I'm really just picking your brain so I can figure out what to do next for pro- projects. <laughs> so this is just very uh, selfish on my point. Well, or well my done. Side. No, I'm kidding. Under the guise of a live show. No. Well, like I, uh, <laughs> the reason I thought of this is that I was trying to explain wicking in a video. Maybe it was like three or four weeks ago. Okay. And the guy was like, Matt, we don't need your bro science. You're, you're saying it wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. I probably am saying it wrong. Um, That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, like none of us reviewers or even a lot of designers, you know, have engineering degrees. But we, we try, try to explain it in layman's terms to make sense. And a lot of the stuff like totally makes sense in my head. I just have a mm. hard time, you know, yeah. putting it simply. No, it's. It's all valid. I mean, it's it's uh, there is a science to it, but what someone else prefers isn't. So that's kind of where it breaks down a little bit. Um, because we would make, like I said, with Westmec, we'd make all these different coils for like the gnome tank or something, for example. And I would love it. The engineer would love it. The three bosses above me wouldn't. They wanted the dryer hit or something. You know, whatever it was, they wanted the opposite. So we always ended up <clears throat> kind of in in the happy medium. And then the worst thing would be we get it dialed in, leave for the States. And then we get, you know, emails of like, Oh, it's dry hitting. And they're like, what happened? And then all of a sudden we find out after we left, you know, somebody went in and just tweaked the, tweak yeah. the, the, the cotton density. And it's like, no, we had it perfect. And now we got, you know, so vape quality a, can be very subjective. I know, oh, I know I've talked oh. to other people that like, they don't like that wetness, the wet vape, which I, I love it. You know, but I'll I'll hand a lot of stuff to Vanessa. Like, what do you you know? I'll be like, wow, this is amazing. What do you, what do you think of this? And she'll be like, yeah, I don't like this about it. I don't like that about it. So everyone's got their own little preferences, and a lot of it has to do with the vape gear that they're already used to. Because we kind yep. of we get so used to certain things. Yeah. And well, and just the division in what actual MTL is. Oh yeah, like, that's huge yeah. too. So <laughs> yeah. someone says, oh, I love MTL, and you hand them something. Uh, specifically from some some of the Chinese manufacturers that just think that anything restricted from a lung hit is MTL and it, it really isn't. So you get these whole like, oh, it's too hot. And it's like, well, no, I just need more airflow. Breathe harder. Yeah, <laughs> MT, MTL vapors are especially picky about like their, yeah. you know, like the, I have my MTL vapors that they know I like a, a 0.8 mil hole. Like that's just what I like. If it's one, if it's one millimeter, I don't like it. It's got to be point eight yep. you know and they, they get very Whatever particular about about uh about the draw and and i understand that too especially because mtl products have gotten so popular over the last year or so like i i get i've gotten more and more particular about the the draw on it and stuff well, for sure and a lot of the pods and stuff that's come out like the the draws are just too loose and and if you can't adjust it it's yeah like the orion I although although i've gotten used to MTL. that though. <laughs> yeah i've gotten used to that though like i close the airflow down Maybe like two thirds of the way, and I still get enough of that 
velocity or whatever, but they they need to come out with the tighter, true MTL pods for that. Yep. A little bit of a shout out to Geek Vape. I think they did a fantastic job on this. It's not, we've seen this before, right? Circular mod, little tiny tank or whatever it is, but as far as MTL airflow, they did, it is a very smooth draw on that one. They did good. They done good (laughs) on that one for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of a I, – I would say – this is kind of off topic, I guess. But I would say the hardest people to design for, in my opinion, are – I would say a lot of people in Europe, but their preference isn't necessarily just MTL. But their preference is drier vape, which is a little bit difficult to do, especially because you don't know necessarily what the VGPG ratio is going to be. Like, again, what Brian's talking about, the viscosity changes on hot and cold. And they like cool vape. So those two things are pretty, in my opinion, pretty difficult to get perfect. But there is a group of people out there that prefers cold vape and on the drier side. Um, and the biggest, the biggest additive to a juice to make it, to, to change the viscosity isn't VG. It's sweetener. We found that a coil that we would develop, for example, would vape brilliantly at 100% VG, the thickest possible juice. Mm-hmm. But if you put a 60-40 with 3% sweetener, it would dry hit. Interesting. Mind-blowing. That was a that was a revolution in and of itself for us. That was a couple of years ago with Westmec. Um, one of the tanks I designed, we literally just put straight VG and we're like, yeah, we're good. Yeah. And, sweetener you know. definitely causes issues in multiple ways. I mean, like I've, I've like been that. using the <laughs> Orion more often lately and like mm-hmm. I put – you know, I – one pod would last me forever on a, on a liquid that wasn't a, as sweet. And then I put a super sweet liquid into a, a brand new pod and it lasted like two days. And it wasn't just be like, you know, cause it was gunking up the coil. I don't think, but it wasn't wicking as well. Yep. It didn't seem like. Yep. Yeah. The thicker viscosity stuff doesn't flow. If that cotton density is meant for less sweet juice, yeah. but then yes, it always messes up the coils always, which shameless plug warning. That's why I love this stuff because yeah. Let's talk has, about your juice before we take some questions because yeah, I I love your liquid as well. Sorry, shameless plug turned into a bit. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, it was. I mean, these are three flavors um, that have been, you know, very much me ever since I started vaping, like uh, summer of thirteen, and so I was making my own stuff because back then I vape zero and today I vape zero, but you could not find a whole lot of zero choice. It was always, you know, six, uh, 12, nine and three didn't really exist then. Um, so I just went on one of the e-cig websites and downloaded or downloaded, bought a, um, bought some VG base, PG base and some flavorings. And so I was making, you know, white grape and white peach, mixing those together, doing black currant, um, mangosteen, a bunch of other stuff. So I've always been a fan of this, but I partnered with superb, which is a phenomenal, company and i say this just because their ability to mix like the the mixologist level that they're at is far beyond anyone else i've ever met um but something that was very important to me and again this was important to them as well so when i met them i was like oh my god you guys are like my soul soul friends um they don't put anything more than maybe a percent in most of their stuff so my coils my cotton lasts forever because when i would do my own stuff i would never put sweetener in because that was another item I had to buy on the website. It was expensive, so I just didn't buy it. Um, so yeah, the, the the juice thing. If you guys didn't know, I partnered with Superb, and you know, there's three flavors: there's white grape, the white peach, and the white currant. My little lab- little logos up top. It's really um, good. The white grape is amazing. It's one of the best grapes out there. He's just saying that. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, no, I love. I mean. For me, it's like I love these flavors, have done forever. If someone else enjoys them, then it just it makes me happy. Because the only thing I would love to see with your line, and I have already told you this, was higher nick options for I know, the MTL I agree. stuff. To be fair, like again, Superb is very sovereign over their own branding and what they want to do, and I I can simply suggest it over and over again, which is fine. But um, we are coming out with some of the different, you know, higher nicotines or nick salts for Europe. So if you're in those countries, you're welcome. Well, superb. <laughs> if you're watching, I want a 50-50 12 milligram white grape. 
that pod life though. <laughs> yeah. For the for the pods. Yep. Or the Actually, MTL tanks. All you have to do is ask. I'll just I'll make you something. <laughs> I know, but I want to share that with the masses. I know, I know. Well, the the problem with most of this stuff is the FDA has uh, yeah, put I their know, foot down know, on new things. Yeah. So. Thanks to Joseph Cyril for the super chat. He says, "Thanks for everything you do, Matt. Thanks for being you, Joseph. You're always uh, in the chat, and I appreciate you." Um, nice. So, where can people buy your liquids if they're interested? Excuse me. Um, it's on Vapor DNA. It's on Element. It's on. Uh oh. <laughs> Flawless, I think. It's um. It's on quite a few websites. It's supposed to be on you know, vape sourcing and and Esig City and all those guys. It's actually reasonably available. And and to be fair, we have quite a few shops um all over the states. Back east here, Cali, all that stuff. So I think we've got it pretty well covered. If someone's having difficulty finding it, just contact me on Instagram or throw a comment in the thing. I'll just it's good stuff. It. It's worth it. And yeah. if you the peach is pretty damn good as well. Peach is bomb. And to be fair, the white currant is amazing. I like that too. It's just if it's understood. Yeah, I it's like, like currant, but like it's not. It's never been like an all day vape for me. The, the peach and grape could be, but yeah, it's obviously a, it's <laughs> That's totally my, a preference I, thing. Yeah. I went to I went to New Zealand probably about a decade ago and discovered what black currant was and I fell in love with the fruit and I'm now permanently addicted to it so it's it's uh the white currant is is kind of my go-to but the but the grape as well. A uh, few people in chat are asking if uh, any place in Canada has it. They do. Queen City Vapes has it for sure amongst I think one quite large distribution channel so there should be several shops up there. If your shop doesn't have it, ask. Um because I'm sure there's, there can only be you know, half a dozen or so proper distributors in Canada. So at least I know we're with at least one of them, if not two. So yeah, we, we I think we've done our due diligence. Superb seems to be pretty much everywhere. Um, they make but, good liquids, not just your line, but they're no, they're that, like that. What's the the peach peach berry something? You're, you got it. Yeah, it, it's uh, that it's, one's good. Like, Nectar berry. Nectar berry. So, That's yeah, what it nectar is. Yeah, berry. It was because of that flavor and the peach berry lemonade that I sent an email. Yeah, I tried the lemonade too, <laughs> but after a while it kind of it got throaty yep. for me, which oh, all, yeah. all lemonades tend to do that. Yep. I just I love citrus too, so I was kind of like. Well, let's start out with some questions. And since uh, my friend Brian, who I love dearly, even though I think he's made a couple of small mouth comments today. Um, TBC. <laughs> yeah, he he asked, uh, "What what's Jabo's preferred daily style vape? RTA, RDA, coil wattage, and juice Nick flavor?" Damn, that's okay. Uh, I my typically my all day vape is aside from I always have something like this on me as a backup, you know, like an MTL ish, you know, either a proper MTL or otherwise, but. The thing that re- these change depending on what it is. The thing that remains constant is squonk, typically single battery. So wattage is depending on uh, ohm resistance. I think the resistance is somewhere in 0. 0.2 range, Clapton, um, and then flavor is going to be either the, the the white currant or the white grape. And I do I do vape other things. For example, I have this one here. Yeah. So the vape Tasia. These guys these guys have been around forever. Oh yeah. We reviewed and, their uh, juice like for, I think it was in 2014 as well. Yeah, so these guys have been around forever. They're local-ish, um, good friends of mine, and they always give me stuff. And so, you know, I like to show them a little bit of love. But I'm currently running the Pineapple Express in the the Flint. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of have – I usually have a squonk with a dripper or something like that to give you that answer. And then I always have a variation on – Something a little bit tighter, not quite proper MTL, but between MTL and this, for example. Um, Ranger Vapes asked an interesting question: Are What's any that? are any manufacturers using hydrodynamics modeling or analysis tools to develop atomizers? You know, we did some of this stuff. We did um, mostly through SolidWorks, but it was more or less for us. It was more or less for marketing purposes, or at least if it was an OEM project for a customer. It was to go, look, here's our testing. Here's, you know, 
potentially the temperatures. And we used this also for um, some conduction devices as well. It wasn't just strictly e-cig. But yes, but it's it's a if if it's used at all, it's used for uh, for marketing or promotion for the customer, and it's used to confirm the structure. We very rarely um, decide whether something is going to go or not based on the actual results themselves. If that makes sense. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, also in the chat, guys, uh, tag me, suck my mod, and because uh, <laughs> then it highlights and I can see it. Or if you're feeling generous, you could always super chat for the uh, mouth fund. Remember, I'm getting surgery on that. We talked about that last week. What happened? That's a joke. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Omboy said that he was going to start a GoFundMe for a a mouth uh, elongation. What would you you call it? You could have struck me alone on that one. I would have believed you. Yeah, dude. I'm going to get get it done. Um, All right. Looking for more questions. Mouth widening. There you go. Yeah. What is it? Here, here's a good question. What is a good way for startup reviewers to contact someone for advice or opinions, possibly from current reviewers? Um, you could email them, but the thing is, is that don't always don't get upset if somebody doesn't email you back. When I first started reviewing, I uh, emailed a bunch of reviewers, and a lot of them didn't get back to me. But you also got to remember that we get, I don't know shitloads of emails 50 to 100 emails a day so sometimes you miss some but um i would email them and that's probably the best way uh like i know i i check my emails more often than than facebook messenger If, if i can answer just a tiny bit of this one sure if you spend any amount of time watching other reviewers spend an equal amount of time being critical and watch them. I don't mean being critical of like, oh, they did that wrong. I mean, notice how long their intro is. Notice how long their videos are. Notice if they do uh, like, you know, some pretty photos or something of that nature of the product. Like, like, look how many pros and cons they do. Look how much they talk about certain things. Basically analyze the structure of each reviewer. Notice the patterns. And then from that information, basically collect your own data and then recreate kind of a template of what you want to do. I didn't do this. I'm just saying it's a good idea. I think you did. From that, I you think you look. did. You watched all of I us didn't. and you were like, uh, what are all their shortcomings? I will tell you the, the one thing I noticed is that everyone posts like these six to eight minute videos and I'm always like in the like 15 to 18 minute and I cannot, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm trying to like make them shorter, but I was like that the first couple of years and now I edit down a lot of stuff. Yep. I try, I try to find that happy medium. Um, somebody asked, does Jabo have anything new coming out? Zach, we did talk about that earlier in the show, but the uh, replay will be up. But yes, he does have some stuff coming out. Um, NorCal Sick Boy, thanks for uh, one, yeah. of my, one of my mods. NorCal, we love him. Thanks for uh, thanks for hiding the question. Suck my mod, are you autistic? <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, no, he's not the one that said, are you autistic? He hid, oh, he hid that. He hid that. So you you were thinking it was funny that NorCal I thought it was hilarious. Say. Everybody, <laughs> loves, everybody loves it when Matt gets shit. Um, Mouth widening. <laughs> Storm and Arrow asked, what's the RTA the other guy is vaping on? It looks like all glass. I think he was talking about what you're vaping on with the cap. You're not a, it's not an RTA, though. It's, it's the – it's- yeah, the profile so with the Entheon the profile deck. Yep, with the with the Entheon. Um, I think it's actually. Pardon me. It's the Entheon Hadion cap. For full clarification, or just make your own. <laughs> um, somebody asked opinion of both on Dot Mod. They seem to be hitting and missing hard. Honestly, Dot Mod hasn't sent me anything for a good couple years. Like they changed owners and stuff, and I. I haven't reviewed anything uh, for them, but so I, I'm not sure. Have you tried any I'm, of the new dot mod stuff? No, I was gonna say I'm with Wake Mod Co. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the OG. I will tell you this: their their new atomizer, uh, sorry, their new Squonk atomizer kit, the one that the 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 sleeve is kind of angled. Like, have you seen it before? Uh uh-uh. uh No, not quite. Oh, jeez. I don't think um, so. Waste a little bit of time. I'm gonna see if I can find a photo of it. 
Um, um, the only reason I mention it is because I found a flaw. Gotcha. <laughs> Thomas, I, I'm not sure when the new Cap and uh, Bill Deck are going to be released for the GOAT, but I, he they were on last week. I thought he said in the next couple weeks or so. Super soon, yeah. <clears throat> um, Thanks to Glenn Neese for the super chat. Appreciate you, buddy. He said you're fine, Matt. Here's for the Keep the Lips fun. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> That's brilliant. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so this isn't going to be incredibly pretty on camera here, but it's this atomizer, right? So the only reason I bring this up is because they the airflow channel kind of comes in into the posts themselves, and then the post has like a little channel that goes all the way through to the coil. Very similar to my Tobino, by the way, but I'm not <laughs> mad at that. The thing I'm pointing out is that where the airflow comes in and where the post is, there's a gap. So air can literally just leak above the post, miss the coil completely, and go straight up the drip Gotcha. Tip. I've seen that on a few RDAs before, kind of that style yeah. where there's too big of a gap. Because you're always going to have a little gap, right? Because you got, got an O-ring. It's not a gap this way, It's a, but it is. It's a gap this way. Like they literally missed. Oh, like it, I see. Yeah. So like the air the, comes in too high. And it's going to go up yeah. instead of like weird. Basically, they don't have a shelf that extends across to the post. It, they could have easily done it by adding another mill, you know, on the on the cap itself, but they just didn't. Anyway, that's my that's my only complaint against Top Mod. Um, somebody asked, "Hey Jabo, did you ever get the Aeronaut RDA designed by Aeronautics Engineer? What did you guys think about about that?" That sounds really familiar. Was this? Uh, can you? Whoever said that again. Just put yes or no here. Is that the one where it had a, a, a tube underneath the coil with an air hole going straight up and a tube above the coil coming straight down? Is that I right? I think it was. I wa- Is that it? I think it did, was. Did it, they say yes? Uh, they haven't said, but I, I remember like, that. Anyway, sorry, what was the full question, though? Just asked did, what it were, what our thoughts were on I it. I don't think I vaped it. I know what it is. Um, I, you know, the idea is cool. It was, uh, it was a way of getting the airflow dead center underneath the coil without really leaking, I guess. But the whole thing was kind of sort of tall and, in my opinion, slightly over-engineered. Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, but I haven't tried it. Airflow so, pipes. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one. And uh, did they do one as well where you, I think you could change the pipes to be different stuff? It was cool. It was a cool idea. Somebody asked you, who who gave you the butterfly on your wall across from the China cabinet? <laughs> yeah. That is grandma. <laughs> She's been she's been gone for like I don't know a decade and a half or something like that, but that was hers. So it's like an, that's like an antique butterfly then. Huh? Yeah, it, it's got like a little shelf in the middle, so you can like put a vase or something on it. Um, let's look through here. Thoughts on the Vandy Vape Paradox airflow? They never sent me that one for some reason. Paradox. What's this one? I, I don't. I, I think it was a single coil. I saw pictures of it, but I never got it. I know. Oh, Vandy vape. You said. Sorry, I was thinking vape fly. Shoestring Tom asks, "How do both of you avoid all the drama in the vape scene?" We've been. I don't know about you. I've been doing this so long. I. You cannot care. It's got to get pretty good to suck me in. At this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. Uh, yeah. I, when I came into this industry, I was naive AF. I was a barista. You know, I had no business experience, no manufacturing experience, really. So I got uh, I got kicked around hard many times to the point where I just kind of, you know, you just can't. This in, can't I mean, engage. yeah, anytime you're, a, you know, whether you're someone that makes makes product or you're, you know, a, a, I don't know, I guess I'd call myself a public figure. The you, you get thick skin after a while. Like yeah, you have to. It takes a lot to trigger me. Like that autistic comment mm-hmm. earlier five years ago that might have like just deep down really bothered me. Yeah. But what do they this, say? The truth, truth hurts. Yeah. At this point, I embrace it. Um. Somebody asked a good question: Is squonking hype going to continue as USA reviewers say, or is it going down slowly as many UK reviewers say? Both parties see that their pain is based on new device monitoring. I haven't really heard 
reviewer saying either way, so I guess I'm out of the loop on that. But what what are your thoughts on squonking? Uh, well, historically, I hated it. I think there's interviews of me being like, oh, squonking's a flawed yeah. system, bro. So I went to Europe, bought one for way too much money, and then forced myself to use it and only it until I made something else that I liked uh, on that system. Basically this. But um, having it's, been converted, which I am a convert, you know, I love it. And that's all I use now. Yeah, it's gotten so much better. And, uh, you know, wh- why I think it's probably here to stay in some capacity or the other is back. OK, it's it's been in and out of style multiple times oh God, yes. since it came out. I mean, I think the Rios yeah. came out in like 2010 or 2011, yeah. something Crazy well, long ago. But the yeah. the thing is, back then, there were only so many RDAs that you could squonk with. You had to buy a special squonk RDA. And, and so incredibly expensive. Yeah. And so now like, that just about every RDA comes with a squonk pen, I mean, it's like I haven't seen one for the last couple of years that doesn't come with a squonk pen. It seems like, you know, squonking is going to continue. I mean, you it might have, you know, rises, and, you know, ups and downs in popularity, but it's definitely not going to go away. And the other thing too is in Europe with the TPD, it's, there's a way of getting around, not getting around, but having a higher than two mil capacity, uh, you know, juice because of, because of the squonk. So I don't, I, if it's declining in the UK, I'm curious. It might just be a price thing. You know, somebody looks at a squonk device and goes, Oh my God, that's, you know, 80, 80 pounds or whatever it is. And a, a pod system is 15 or 20 or something. So. Um, that I understand, but as far as a system, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, Brian asked favorite innovative products that never took off and sold well. Ooh, that's a good question. Oh God. Hang on. Hang on. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I know it's a tough one. Oh, there's so many. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, my brain's like running through like just lists of products. Um, I know it's so hard to remember. I know there have yeah. been some that have definitely been underrated that never really took off. But I'm trying to think of one that really shines for me. I mean, there's there was certain modular devices in the in the mod spectrum where you could run single eighteen six fifty, dual eighteen six fifty, or a or a, a lipo or something like that, and just switch the contacts, stuff like that. Um, I think Anakin was the first one to do that, and they, I, I didn't really like what they did, but I liked the idea, and that didn't really do well. God, what else? There's so much innovation that was just squashed, or at least didn't go until much, much, much later. Mesh, case in point. Um, I mean, hell, the the theorem with the notch coil, that was like the predecessor to Mesh, and it, it did okay, but then there was just nothing for the longest time until Mesh kind of resurfaced. Um Damn you! That was a good question, sir. I'm I'm struggling to actually. Like, I know that's one I need to think about. Yeah, we'll we'll answer it next time I have you on. I'll try. Yeah, down. Um, that's frustrating. There's so, so many. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Have you guys ever used the gauntlet? It is vertical coils. I don't think I've used that. So. If, if, humor me here. The gauntlet is is vertical mesh because that was done by Cthulhu. I don't remember the name uh, of the I actual. Have, I don't think that that was called the gauntlet. I'm not sure which, it, which one was. The there's gauntlet. one that had a deck very similar to another older atomizer called the Marquee, and it's basically a, an RDA that's like half filled with post, and then the coils would just be vertical. Um, actually, very similar to the the Theorem prototype, if you remember that, Matt. The vertical coils. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Mm hmm. <laughs> you guys get so much stuff sent to you to review. What is the oldest device you still love and use above all else? Ooh. I don't really have the liberty of using old stuff very often yeah. because I'm always having to test something new. But I'll tell mm-hmm. you, like, the devices that are still, like, near and dear to my heart that are old are my Proveris, which I will never sell unless maybe, like, some vape. Uh, a uh, museum wants them someday. The- <laughs> uh, there's a lot of mechanicals I still have, like the glass. Remember those? The glass mechanical. Uh, mine's the simple mod. I still use mine. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. For sure. 
the 350 now. Yeah, I still use the simple mod for sure. Uh, God, RDAs and RTAs and stuff like that, I think. I still use my KFON, but I also still use my Limo 3 on occasion. Or not oh, Limo yeah. 3, sorry. The Limo. The Limo, the original still, Limo. I've got one of those built with a little slam cap on it. And then... Um, God. Oh, Subom. Uh, not not Subom. Hexom. Oh, got yeah. My Hexom that I use. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, of course, I use my, my Noisy Cricket now as well. But Yeah, there's certain like pieces that like you just you know, are never going to get rid setup. of. No, I have like some. Yeah. I have some Hannah mods that oh god, I'll no. never get rid of either. I never got it. It's lipo. I never. Yeah, it's well. One it wasn't one of the smaller one was lipo, or was, but was the yeah. bigger one? Maybe it was. Maybe they were they both lipos. Yeah, I think you're right. I just remember people vaping them for like twenty minutes and then plugging it in for an hour and a half. <laughs> um, James asked, "Have you have you received the vape fly Brunhild designed from the 103 German group? I have not. I do want to try that though because I liked their last uh, the last RTA that those guys put out. Actually, I really like Pixie. Oh yeah, Pixie's pretty good too. Pixie was pretty good for what it was. I was I was impressed. Um, NorCal Sick Boy, I did not sell the double barrel you gave me. I still have it, buddy. Did you sell it for coll- collagen injections? <laughs> See, now you are being mean to me because See, I love it. Yeah. Jay egged you on. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that thing is huge. By the way, the, the, the Brunhild, I just looked it up. It's tall. I think it's some That's sort of, I think they're using like stainless steel rope or something in there for whipping. It looks like they're using cable, like the, like the old days. Yeah. Cable and eco wool. Um, thoughts on squonks with non-cylindrical bottles with the idea of that the top side was introduced. There's no real reason for it to be a traditional bottle. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think if it's a good design, I don't think it has to be a proprietary or, I mean, I don't think it has to be a traditional, you know, one of those universal bottles. It could be proprietary if it's, if it's a good design. Um, a lot of the, the worry there though, is like, if that mod doesn't take off and do well, will you still have access to buying the bottles? Right. Usually if it's not conventional, it's for volumetric reasons, like making it a square so it fits perfectly or something like that, or kind of a moon shape, you know, so it can fit around a battery to be smaller or something like that. Yeah, you know? like the uh, the one from USV, I believe, is that way, and yep. the uh, the Dot one that two. the yeah the one that uh, the Battlestar Squonker that one's proprietary mm-hmm. to, and it's super small because of the way they they shaped it. <laughs> No, where I draw the line with squonkers is the ones that have permanent bottles. Yeah, I could understand that. It's like you have to fill from the 510 or else. Um, so thanks for the super chat, the Vapor Chronicles. SMM nice. Sexy Mini Mouth Fund. Appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> see, so- Brian? See what I'm doing? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm being funny. Somebody said one of the next big hits will be a top airflow closable RDTA for squonkers. I'm, I'm, what, uh, I'm going to disagree with them. Yeah, I've what do, played with this. What do they mean by closable? Well, basically, it's uh, you're you're closing the wicking holes and then squonking from underneath somehow. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we even we even went as far as to make a, a little mini prototype of a fillable tank. It's. it's it's so I don't want to I don't want to bash your idea. It's it's so not pointless. It's so inconvenient, inconvenient. Excuse me. That um, I mean, with how easy it is to fill tanks nowadays, like there's no reason to have a squonkable something. Um, I'll tell you guys what I think is going to be, um, you know, kind of get back into style oh, this year. And I was R- oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, no. I was just looking at the chat here. It says RDTA. Yeah, same thing. Squawkable RDTAs. Those are okay-ish. I guess that's kind of this, the the Cthulhu, the one I'm vaping. But sorry, I thought you said RDTA. Uh, sorry, RTA. If I was wrong, I apologize. I thought you said RTA. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Well, I was telling Jay this before the show, but I see a I see single eighteen small single eighteen six fifty mods coming back in a style this year, and the reason being is. For necessity's sake, there's so many new 
mouth to lung tanks coming out and there's a lot more that will be coming out that I know, you know, different people are working on, you know, even stuff like the K funds, but also mass produced stuff. And people are going to realize I don't need a single 21 700 mod for this. I don't need a dual 18650 mod for this. Um, I want a small, tiny little single 18650 mod. And there haven't been a ton of them that have come out over the last year or two. So I think we're going to see a (coughs) reemergence of single 18650 mods that kind of have updated styling, you know, maybe a few, you know, updated board and and features like that. Um, You know, the reason I thought about that is like, you know, I was building the new K fund and I'm like, what mod am I going to put this on? I don't have a lot of single 18650s that are newer. You know, most of them are are on the older side. So yep. that's one of my opinions. Use the RX, uh, what is it? I just blanked. It's not the RX-7. But anyway, the single battery. Well, the thing is, like, with, these mouth to, with the mouth-to-lung tanks like this, I'm using it at 15 watts. Oh, sure. A single 18650 will last me, like, a day, day and a half with this. So, like, why do I want to have a bigger mod than, than a little single 18650 for something like this? Might even see some regulate more regulated tubes that are single 18650s. I don't know, but I think it's going to happen. You heard it here for, first, folks. I even like the little nugget from back in the day, little baby tiny oh, box yeah. mod. Yeah. It would be perfect for that, you know? I mean, obviously, your, your hand shape would be all, like, <laughs> clawed, but... Uh, um, do we have any questions, guys, before we end this? For workers, a rainproof RTA. I kind of brought that up today in the video just <clears throat> because I was reviewing this. And, mm-hmm. you know, I obviously always point out, hey, you know, the mod's waterproof and, and shockproof, but obviously the tank isn't. The problem sure. is, is that airflow's got to get in there. So, you know, yeah. it, you, you can only make, you can make it more indestructible, you know, having an all metal tank or some other tougher material instead of glass, but it's never going to be waterproof when it's got to be exposed to, you know, for air to be able to get in. So Nick, Nick Pank 11 says, what is mouth to lung? If, if, if I may. So a mouth hit is just something where you're using, you, you close off the back of your throat and you move your tongue down to create a suction in your mouth. Once you've got the vape, then you go to the lungs as a secondary. This is something that we used as a cigarette smoker or at least a device to mitigate the strength of the smoke or whatever and the heat as well. So to demonstrate. Mm. Mouth to lung. Kind of. I just wanted to take the opportunity. Sorry. Mouth mouth to lung mimics more of like a cigarette draw. You yeah, know, and then and then direct to lung would be a looser draw, more airflow, something that you breathe in all the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody asked me, "Do you ever go out and buy any vape gear that you really want and isn't sent to you?" What was the last one? Uh, yes, I do. I buy more juice than I do hardware. Um, but like, I don't know. The last thing I just <clears throat> bought was a couple bottles of juice and a bunch of Orion pods. Uh, I bought the uh, Spade a couple of months ago. I I buy things here and there depending on what they are, if it's something I really want to try. Yeah, same. Usually it's <clears> – I mean, you can always email them and be like, hey, could I have a sample or whatever? And But, I mean, there's there's no replacing good old-fashioned capitalism for buying yeah, something. Yeah, sometimes like when you do that, then like you have to commit to – to reviewing it and I might not want to review it, you know? So it's sometimes like, I some... did that with the, um, with the Ultima vape. It's a company out of Indonesia. They have this little, little squonk RTA called the Diggy and it looks beautiful, but I tried for the hardest, for the longest time, I tried really hard to buy one and then got one. And then eventually they sent, sent me one as well. So I'll do a review on that too, guys, but just something cool. It's like it's, I wanted it's it. Called you know, it's called the Diggy. Indonesia. The Diggy. Is Di- it? Diggy, maybe. D i g g i e. Gotcha. I'll have to try it out. If, if you say it in Indonesian, it sounds fun. <laughs> um, somebody said opinion on pod systems. With all the hype, we still didn't get any good rebuildable ones in the market. Is it just a it, gimmick to keep you buying pods? No. A lot of it is legislation. You keep that in mind. Closed system and open system is a huge conversation point for governments all over the world. So a pod system has the ability to do both closed and open system. So if the country 
needs closed system, it's perfect. You know, you don't have to mess with all that stuff. And we were talking about this before as well. Um, yeah, I mean, like, like the, the, rebuild, the rebuildable, rebuildable ones, I mean, it's definitely a more of a niche thing. Like, it's for the people that still that like MTL and still want to mess around or whatever. But a lot of people buy pods for the simplicity of them as well. Convenience. So. Huge convenience, yeah. I mean, I, I've even – I have friends that vape things like the fix and the jewel and Miley and all that stuff. And I explained to them the per pod cost minus the amount of the plastic, like what they were paying for the milliliters of e-liquid alone. And it ended up being like 400 or 350, $75, something like that for a 30 mil bottle. And they're like, Oh my God, that's ridiculously expensive. I need to go buy pods. Yeah. You know? So it's like, they just don't, it's the convenience factor. And as far as rebuildability goes, nobody really wants to change the coil of a pod. You're more, I think you're more concerned about the cotton itself. So, yeah, I mean, that being said, I think we probably will see some this year, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of a niche thing, but mm -hmm. I, I'm a, I'm assuming we're going to see some that probably can take rebuildables and coils at the same time. Nothing uh, wrong with it, by the way, just convenience. Uh, how do interesting comment. How do you decide what you do or don't review? Um, it, it depends on how busy I am, honestly. Yeah. Like late, lately, the pro products always tend to slow down on in, in the beginning of the year, especially because the Chinese go to holiday in February. So then you can get caught up and stuff. Um, yep. But like, the, you know, if I they say there's some obscure product I really want to try, <laughs> like, but, you know, I'm not certain that I want to review it. You know, especially if it's like a small company or something, I just don't know if I want to review it, but I really want to try it. Like there's, I, I've bought things and not reviewed them before. Um, Brian asked, having an industry wide enclosed battery safety standard would be a huge step forward. No more torn wraps or exposed battery terminals. It needs to be a standardized system. What are your you're thoughts talking, on that? You're talking about UL, the, the, whoever mentioned that. Um, yeah, we, I mean, Joytech was the only company, the only vaping company at all to be UL certified. Really? Because Period. Inakin just we, announced we their, it. they did one with uh, mm -hmm. their uh, their mod, that, that built-in battery mod. Yep. And I thought that they were the first. I didn't know that Joytech was, was we UL were the, certified. I think we, we finally finished all that stuff in April of last year. We were the first ones. But anyway, the point is, is that there's no... There is no requirement. There is no standardization as of yet. <clears throat> if you had an industry-wide standardized closed close system 18650 where the wrap doesn't matter, it, it's still, you know, at, at the end of the day, there is still some regulation on what kind of um, amp output, out, what kind of stress you can put on the cells. Mooch, so, Battery Mooch is in chat. What's up, buddy? He dude, said, he he's said the answer, answer. Go. He said three, com three companies have gotten UL8139 certification so far. Cool, cool. Um, somebody asked, do you think the USonic ultrasonic technology will ever come around? Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting – I think it's gotten better with this. Have you tried this? <laughs> no, I haven't. I've just tried the first one. It's a lot better than the first one. Yeah, the first one was <laughs> – It still takes like some heating up. Like this is cold. I haven't vaped this for a couple days. Okay. suspense see i'm not getting anything yep. <laughs> you gotta let it you gotta let it heat up a little bit sorry i shouldn't be dogging you on this one um i why we, is it blinking at me we we played with ultrasonic um yeah it's it's i don't know <clears throat> the the viscosity of the juice is far too thick to actually See now you get vaporized that's the problem. thing is like weird it's weird with this like once it warms up I actually get a pretty nice vape but like if it's so, cold if it's cold you get nothing like the first couple draws yeah. off of it so if you have you guys ever seen those like humidifiers that you literally put water in or essential oils or something and you push a button and it like mists you that kind of thing so that's actual ultrasonic vaporization what these devices are doing, or at least the device previous to this one, is it's two ultrasonic plates that are moving so much that it's creating heat, and the heat is creating the vaporization, if that makes sense. So we weren't able to actually get it to ultrasonic vaporize e-liquid as its, as its own deal. 
I one, haven't tried that though. So one thing I found with these is that they're a cooler vape, but mm. the flavor is actually pretty good on them. Okay. It's just it, but it's got that cooler vape that that's you know I like a warmer vape than this. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Mooch. You're the man. And it can enjoy tech smog. Cool, cool. It's a different experience, though. Like, if someone has a chance to try <clears throat> try the ultrasonic vaping, try it out. I've heard from people that like it and like have used, are using it regularly, and then I've heard from people that uh, it, it's just way too cool of a vape for them. Um. So it's, yeah, ultrasonic friction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's basically kind of. a little disc in there, right? And there's yep. ceramic wicking that's connected to that disc, I believe. It's or there's a plate it's, on it or a ceramic plate or something on the top yeah, and then so it's basically it vibrates enough. You can't see it. It just it just gets hot. <laughs> and that's what's odd about it is it really takes once it's ramped up you get a lot of vapor out of it for a pod system, but it's like nothing at first. <laughs> ah, excuse me. Okay. So, should we end it there? Do you guys have any more questions? Sometimes I like to look at these deleted messages just to uh, see what people say that my I, the lovely I'm, Amy. I'm actually on stream, so I can't actually see the deleted ones. Well, you have to. You have to. It has to be your channel, or you have to be a mod to be able to see what, oh, what was it. deleted. Um, all right, you guys have any any more questions, or should we or should we wrap it up? Thanks for the shout out, Chuck. <laughs> Why don't they make more RTAs that have glass caps? Oh, Trinity Glass has done this. They've been doing it forever. The The main issue is that it's it's a little bit difficult to hold tolerances, and you're slightly limited on airflow options, meaning in order to put a hole into glass, your fail rate is incredibly high. So what they typically do is they do like a, um, a cooled uh, – like a diamond disc, and they actually cut a slot. So depending on the thickness of that glass that day, that slot is going to be different. So it's really difficult to get consistent um, – products so for a mass marketed option it's really not viable that helps um somebody said opinion on countries banning vape uh it's obviously it's never it's never a good thing i mean i have hope in the fact that as more and more science comes out over the years it'll be understood more and more and uh you know countries (laughs) even if they want to ban it will be forced to uh to uh to let it happen, but we will see. Well, keep keep in mind a lot of the countries that were vaping is already banned. Tobacco is owned by the own government. Yeah, it's not a privatized tobacco like ours is, which is technically not worse. It's just it's in the government's own interest to make it illegal, so they do. <laughs> so, you know, and, until they either come around to public health stuff or if they want to produce their own vaporizing products, then they'll fix it. But most of those ones that are illegal, it's it's government owned. It's ridiculous, and it could take decades in some of these countries. I mean, I mm-hmm. have hope that eventually, you know, people get enlightened to it or whatever. But I mean, look at or, how long yeah. it's look at how long it's taken in this country with something like cannabis. I'm not saying that that's a direct comparison with nicotine before somebody calls me out, but I mean, we we had <laughs> all these horror stories of how bad it was for years, and. While there's still arguments about health benefits and, you know, people could still be mentally addicted to it and whatever, obviously, uh, we've we've gotten a lot more research and, and see that it's not the, the devil's cabbage. Um, I don't know if that's Drew from Inciv, but love you, buddy. It's not smoke, it's vapor. I just saw it pop up. Oh, yeah. Is that, the, it, is that the original Inciv? I don't know. I just saw the name. If that's Drew, hi. <laughs> I still got that. Ooh, sorry, I've still got the hat somewhere. I do too. I have one yeah. of those Incif hats. It was like special back in the day, you know. Yeah, people tend to fear what they don't understand. Uh-huh. All right, well, let's wrap it up there, Jabo. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. We'll do it again once awesome. you uh, launch one of your next products we'll have you on and we'll, and we'll talk about that yeah i don't have a proto on me or anything but i'll, I'll, no, I'll you do don't some have, more you have to show it here but like yeah. when, when you're ready to launch it we could have you on it and talk about it i want to do that uh quite a bit with, with upcoming products and stuff Woo-hoo. um uh what else was i gonna say 
Oh, like I said, guys, in, in the beginning next week, I do have uh, Dash Vapes coming on. Oh, yeah. Texas, and, right? No, they're oh, in no. Canada. Oh, I thought it was Texas. Hey, you should Oops. check out the... Or Kentucky? Canada. Oh, really? Kansas? Dash I don't Vapes. Know. Dash I could have sworn. Canada. I thought they were stateside. Toronto or something, I think. Oh, shows my ignorance. Sorry, guys. You should watch their channel. I mean, it, it's I, grown fast, but they do a lot more like topical stuff. I actually you. watched one of their videos today, but... You know, it just popped up on my feed. I just totally thought... I don't they know were, how you got Kentucky out of that. The guy talks like know. he's Canadian. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the week uh. after, the week after that, I do have um, uh, Ruby and her husband to co- come on and talk about uh, the Monarch mods. And then next month, I got That's a whole bunch fun. of cool shit. I am trying to get some non-vape-related YouTuber or YouTubers that do vape to come on and cause I'm trying to get some of these people to come out of the woodwork too. Like, <laughs> like a lot of people Makes are sense. like they, they're, they hide the fact that they vape because they're, they're worried about it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, we shall see how that goes. Thanks to all of you for tuning in again, Jay. Thanks for coming on, buddy. It was a good time and I uh, hope so you all enjoyed always. it. We'll see you next Monday guys. Bye everybody. Thank you.